about two-step growth covering and applications. So, first, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for um, um, inviting me. It's not uh, um, obvious, you know. I'm not in model theory. I'm not in uh, in uh, in set theory. Although, although. Um, um, I must say that during my, my first degree at the Hebrew University, um, that was the thing I liked most. I wasn't an expert, of course, but I was fascinated by, by lectures by Saharon, um, uh, infinitary combinatorics, uh, you know, um, all kinds of infinite Ramsey theory and stuff like this. And, uh, and, um, and I also learned forcing with the, um, uh, as a levy, so so I had some background, but then my master thesis was in Tel Aviv, and I became an algebraist. So it's kind of a, you know nice to be with the um, uh, model theorists. Uh, um, yeah, what okay. you don't and know, the, yeah, what you don't know is that unfortunately many model theorists today know much less theory than you do. Uh, pardon, say it again. I hope it will change back. I mean, in my generation, we learned the same set theory that you're talking about. But some of the younger set theories, model theories, no longer know the set theory that you know. I see. Yeah. So you're yeah. Very much an expert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Udi, Udi is 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 a good friend for many years. So um, um, it's it's really. Um, pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, okay, so so I'm going to talk about um, 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 things which are related actually to approximate subgroups. So so Udi uh, um, gave a beautiful talk about this topic uh, last year and has contributed to this a lot. And um, um, what 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 I would like, if you like, you know, you can also. Uh, first of all, my emphasis will be not on infinite groups, but on finite groups, but there is a rich theory of approximate subgroups in, in finite groups as well, and finite simple groups in particular. And um, um, and, 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 and I, I, will, I will focus on, on finite uh, um, stuff mainly, but, uh, but it will be certainly connected to, to um, uh, Udi's um, work in a deep way. Um, so um, so let's start with um, 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 a group and a definition of subsets. Uh, you know, this group might be infinite also. At some point, it will be finite and simple. And, um, uh, and then this is simply the definition of a uh, um, sub, um, you know, um, product of subsets uh, and uh, two subsets, uh, three subsets, etc. And um, 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 our goal is is to study the product side and, and growth phenomena in, in, in this con context. So um, um, the thing is that um, 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 one of, if, if we focus on finite, and certainly uh, an, uh, um, an amazing breakthrough uh, was, uh, uh, has been done by um, Harald Helfgott in 2006. And I actually was lucky to be in Princeton um, at that time and he was there too. So, so it was really a very exciting time. And um, um, so, so, so basically he dealt with SL2P and he, he shows that, uh, um, um, that there is a, um, 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 big growth, uh, big three-step growth in SL2P. So, so the formulation is written here. There is an absolute positive constant epsilon, such that if you take uh, any prime uh, um, at least five and this um, simple or quasi-simple group SL2P, and if you take a subset with which generates uh, the group, then either A cubed, all the products uh, of length three of elements of A will be the whole of G. So this is a covering phenomenon, or there is a growth phenomenon, which the size of A cubed is at least uh, the size of A to the one plus epsilon. And this is of course related to, to Tal's notion of K approximate uh, subgroups or groups. And uh, um, um, so, so um, yeah, okay. 
Okay, so um, so let's uh, continue. Um, okay, so um, uh, so we were discussing a, a growth phenomenon for for SL2P in the context of uh, of um, 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 work by 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 Udi and and others. So um, so Udi's. You see now, now. Now I see only part of the screen because your your pictures are. Um, wait a minute. At the other side, it's a bit sad. Okay, um, sorry about this. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, so, so, um, so, so, so one of the nice uh, results about, do you hear me? Yes, yes, yeah. we hear you. Do you, do you, can you see me and hear me now? Okay. You can? Yes, we can. Okay, so um, um, so 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 uh, so one of the nice results for finite groups uh, here is 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 called uh, now the product theorem, and it was approved independently um, by um, Lati Pieber and uh, uh, Andre Sabo and by uh, um, Broyard Green and, and Tau. Uh, essentially, it's the same Tau, and uh, Broyard Green and Tau used the uh, Udi's work also. Uh, so, 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 so basically, it's quite an amazing theorem. Uh, you have um, a, a finite simple group uh, of lead type of given a rank, so it's a bounded rank situation. Then there is a, a positive uh, epsilon depending on the rank, such that um, if if a generates g, and the, then either a cube is G or A cube is very large, at least the size of A to the one plus epsilon. Namely, it is a product theorem is just the generalization of, of, uh, of the uh, health group theorem from SL to P to um, finite simple groups of lead type of bounded rank. Okay, now um, um, let, let's, let's deal a little bit with covering two. So, so that's um, um, very much related to, to, to um, Tim Gowers. So uh, G here is any finite group. MG is a minimal degree of a non-trivially reducible complex representation of G. And uh, we call a family of group quasi-random if, if, uh, if uh, MG tends to infinity uh, in this family um, of, of groups, okay? Um, so, uh, so for example, if we take all non-abelian finite simple groups, uh, uh, this is a quasi-random family. It is, it is, it is well known. Uh, the representation theory is, is quite well understood. Um, of course, if we took abelian simple group ZP, then 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 it wouldn't be quasi-random. Now, Gower's trick uh, uh, says that uh, um, whenever you have a, a, um, um, two subsets of a finite group G, such that the product of the sizes of the sub subset is at least G cube divided by this parameter M of G. Uh, if this holds, then it guarantees a covering phenomenon, namely ABC is a whole of G. And then there are um, simple consequences um, of, of this. Uh, for example, if you have just one subset and it has this size, large enough size, then uh, a cube is G and, uh, and, and all kind of, um, 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 if, if you take finite simple groups, for example, and, uh, and um, you, you assume that at least a positive proportion of the element um, is, um, um, 
the, the, the size of the free subsets has positive proportion in G, then, then again, you have that the product of them is everything, it covers G, provided G is sufficiently large. Okay, so we discussed this is introduction to growth and to covering. Um, now, um, um, the, the main uh, light motif of this talk is to try to go down from three to two. So, so, so what happens if we just have two uh, subsets, not three subsets? Um, so um, usually in this case, uh, and if you take finite simple groups, we, we don't necessarily have growth. If you take classical groups of rank going to infinity or alternating group of degree going to infinity, then, then we can find examples, counter examples, no growth, no covering. Uh, if, if the length is two, we have two sets. But there is, a, this is a very elementary, this is, this is really a trivial exercise um, for undergraduate or year, first year, um, um, that if, if, this, if the sets are large enough in the sense that uh, um, um, the, the size, the probability to be in the set is greater than zero, then it is immediate that there is covering. And, uh, and the reason is that A is intersects uh, uh, GB mean minus one for every element G. So this is absolutely trivial. Um, and by the way, this rare yes, it is, it is indeed um, um, uh, so trivial, but it will be actually very useful um, uh, towards the end of the talk. Uh, it, is, it is one trivial step among many other um, uh, non-trivial steps and is needed to complete the proof of a certain result. Anyway, um, now what if, if, if we deal with normal subsets? Uh, maybe for them, uh, we can obtain results uh, for two subsets, um, for example, growth. So there is a result of, uh, of Martin Liebeck and uh, uh, my ex-PhD student, uh, Gilly Schul, uh, uh, um, and myself from a few years ago, uh, saying that indeed in, in, the, in the normal uh, set, uh, normal subset uh, situation, um, there is growth. Uh, and um, if the subsets are, are very large in this sense, you know, then, then, uh, then the growth is close to maximal. Okay, so, so uh, the, the cardinality of RS is, is almost the, the product of the cardinalities, namely the product of the one minus epsilon. Um, so this is a very fast growth, which we don't uh, know in, in approximate subgroups. Um, and in particular, if you have just one normal subset, uh, very small, then the square of it will be extremely large, as you can see. Uh, so, um, so, 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 um, so the, the nice thing about this, is that it, first of all, it, it holds for all finite simple groups, not just uh, of Lie type of bounded rank. And, and also that we have two step, two step growth and instead of three step growth. But of course, we also have very strong assumptions in this result. If you have questions, don't uh, hesitate to interrupt me. Okay, now, now to give you some motivation also why, why is it interesting to study product of two normal subsets, let me, let me give you such a motivation. It is a famous uh, and notoriously difficult Thompson's conjecture. So what is a conjecture? That if you have a, a finite simple group, a non-abelian of course, then it has a conjugacy class whose square is a whole group. So uh, um, um, this, this is a, um, this implies uh, an, an older conjecture by Ore um, that every element of a non-abelian finite simple group is a commutator, is a commutator, and this was uh, was um, proved um, um, about ten years ago um, uh, in joint work with um, Martin and Imon O'Brien and and Tiep, and uh, but but um, uh, the while there was a big progress in Ores conjecture, there, there, are, there is progress in Thompson's conjecture as well, but, but much slower. So, so it is still open for some um, finite simple groups of Lie type over tiny fields, but we do have some approximations to Thompson's conjecture. 
Um, so, uh, so for example, this result is saying that if you take, roughly speaking, if a random conjugacy class, its square almost covers the whole group. Okay, so it's kind of a probabilistic approximation, if if you like. On the one hand, it is it is better because uh, it it is it is for almost all classes in a sense, not just one. But on the other hand, it doesn't give you covering, but almost covering. Um, um, and also, um, um, there is um, a result with um, with Michael Larson and Fam Tiep such that large enough finite simple groups have two conjugacy classes whose product is G um, um, possibly minus identity element. Uh, it is really embarrassing how large, uh, uh, in, in our theorem, how large the group should be. To, it should be at least of order two to the 630. Um, and Guralnik and, and Male improved it and Actually showed using also computers, computational group theory that it actually holds without exception, but not the original conjecture, this version. Okay, uh, another uh, motivation or, or context uh, um, which leads us to normal subsets is the theory of world maps. Um, so um, uh, basically a world is a, let's say non-trivial element of the free group, uh, let's say on the generators, and you can substitute the uh, elements, group elements, uh, um, given any group G, you can, say, you can subset group element GI in the free generator, say XI of the, of the free group, and, uh, and, and you get a world map, for example, if the world was a commutator, then, then this is a commutator map, which we know that it is um, subjective on simple um, groups, um, and the uh, and the image of this world map is denoted by WG, and WG is obviously a normal subset, it's trivial. Um, so this is another context where normal subsets and their product occur naturally. There is a classical of a result of Borel on world map, which maps, which really is a foundation of the theory that world maps on simple algebraic groups are dominant. And, uh, and in, in recent decades, there is a lot of research on, on world maps uh, uh, on finite simple groups, which is um, a bit more, more um, subtle than the infinite case. Uh, so a crash course on this, let me give you, give you just some results. So, so we are, we are, we are um, the motivation can be, for example, wearing prob problem in number theory that every, every um, 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 positive integer is the sum of four squares. Um, and, uh, and, and here we take, the, it's a group, so we take products and not sums. And we, we, we want to show that um, short product or short powers is, is everything. And uh, so, so there are results, uh, this is a weaker result with certain unspecified exponents, a covering result, then, uh, the exponent became three here, and then it became two here. And then there is also a certain probabilistic uh, um, um, uh, result answering a certain conjecture. Um, but um, but uh, I, I would like to be quick because we have less time than expected. Um, okay, so, so uh, can, we, can we extend the results of this type for all large normal um, subsets. Um, okay, um, images of, um, of, of world maps are, are large. First of all, they are large because, uh, because uh, on the algebraic level, it's a dominant map. But, but, uh, but for example, Michael Larson show that uh, they are large in all kinds of senses in, in this paper, and then there are um, um, more delicate uh, results later. So, uh, so, so, um, so we have large normal subset in the context of, no, of, of, of world maps and, and we have all kind of covering a phenomenon for world map, are they, uh, um, uh, do they hold also um, in more general context? So the question one is um, um, in this, under these uh, assumptions, does ST contain G minus identity if G is sufficiently large, find a simple group. Question two is even more ambitious. Here we want um, 
to get um, everything, but if, if we choose this element, an element from S at random and an element from D at random with respect to uniform with distribution, uh, we hope that uh, to get every element of the product um, um, with um, kind of um, almost uniform distribution in the sense of L infinity, okay? So for example, a positive solution here implies a positive solution here. And then there is some interest where we, in the case where we have um, one set actually, and uh, maybe the other question is, what is it good for? So uh, we will discuss these two. Um, okay, there are all kinds of comments here, um, uh, why some uh, all kinds of restrictions are necessary, for example, to to get the e away here and but but let's let's keep it now. Um, but try to remember the questions. Um, okay, so originally we hope to for positive answers to to question one for all finite simple groups. It's a bit hard to prove wrong results, so we we have weaker uh, results here. So um, um, so question one, the the, the covering problem, uh, it has negative answers for finite simple groups in general. For example, for alternating group or for pro projective special linear groups. So not 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 uh, no such luck here. If s equals two. We still have a negative answer for alternating groups. Now, again, in the case S equals two, um, 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 a question two has negative answer for for um, um, alternating group, and then, um, but but um, in the case S equals two, question one has a positive answer for alternating groups. Okay, and the 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 then. Um, um, the good news is we started with bad news and we gradually moved to good news. That if we take um, a, a group of three type of bounded rank, then the answer to both questions one and two are positive. Okay, um, so um, um, okay, let me let me skip some some um, short remarks which you can uh, read in the slide and. Um, um, let us let us uh, um, clarify or, or focus a little bit on on alternating groups. So, um, if S is T, we get a covering result for for epsilon, which is which is rather fast. It uh, it, it, um, it 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 goes to zero. Um, um, quite fast with the order of of the alternating group. So the result is is uh, saying that. Um, um, that if um, alpha is less than one quarter, and if uh, um, um, th then there is an n depending on alpha sufficiently large, such that if little n is at least big n and t is a normal subset satisfying this, then there is a covering result. So t square is everything. Um, and um, um, this result relies heavily on representation theory, in this case, of course, for, for symmetric groups and more specifically for char character bounds. So in, in a paper with, with Michael Arsen, we, we provided such bounds, a bound on the character value, uh, it is it, to bound in, in terms of a certain power of the character degree. And the power it would be nice if it will be less than one, otherwise it's trivial. And it, if it's small, it's even nicer. So there, are, there is quite a um, um, developed theory. Um, other people, people also before and after us, uh, um, uh, were very interested in exponential bound character bounds for finite simple groups in general for a, for a whole range of applications. So, so this is a. Um, um, this is one of them. And um, um, now what about uh, classical groups? So here there are, there are bad, um, bad news in, in general. So question one has a negative answer, for example, for PSLN. And uh, we can, we can uh, take, for example, uh, large normal uh, subsorts, uh, such that the product contains no transvection. 
Um, so, so it doesn't cover G minus uh, the identity element, but we, there is a positive result for length uh, three, um, which is non, it is not trivial, um, and it is it is says what what you see. Um, so we have three step covering, but uh, but but we have epsilon which goes fairly quickly to to zero here, and. Um, um, this doesn't follow from Gower three trick. Or often three step covering follows from Gauss, but it doesn't follow in this case. Um, and um, um, let me let, let me let me just uh, draw your attention to a, a very nice result of Gual, Larsen, and Tiep, uh, which is um, actually they, they found it a certain um, level theory of characters, and this level, some of the byproducts is the theorem uh, uh, you see here, which is a main tool in, in the proof of, of the previous result on this slide. Um, okay, now uh, 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 the, the, the good news is, uh, you know, the bounded range uh, uh, theorem and and if we have this notation that the PR1 RKG is a probability that um, X1 to XK is G, where XI is a random element of RI, and these are normal subsets. And, uh, and uh, a, a, main, a main result, um, um, again, you know, everything is with, with Arsen and Tiep, uh, is, uh, is it not only um, question one has a positive result here, but also question two. So um, we have an L infinity result um, here. Um, okay, so um, um, again, the proof tools, uh, they combine representation theory and um, uh, all kinds of exponential character bounds which are mentioned here. Um, which are mentioned here, um, but also tools from um, algebraic geometry. Uh, for example, we need the Langevin theorem, and also we need the um, uh, Udi's uh, famous paper on the elementary theory of uh, Frobenius uh, uh, orthomorphisms. Um, so, um, so, so these two are the main tools, and um, um, let me. Um, um, okay, let, let me mention, this is a certain result which is less related to, to this particular work. It is a bit um, earlier, um, but, uh, but this is, uh, but this is uh, simply um, the, the result I, I, mentioned, I mentioned before um, um, in the bounded rent case, um, um, which is um, a positive, answer to question two and one. Okay, now let me move to, to applications. Um, so um, what is the derage? So, so we already have some applications to, to world maps, if you like, because this is a new result about world map. The, the result is saying, yes, that if we, if we take a random element of the image of the world map of, W1 and the random element of this, we multiply them, then we get a uniform distribution in L infinity. Um, and um, a, a previous result like this was um, prov proved by Nikolov and Piper, but it's a, it's a three step results for three um, 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 uh, words W1, W2, W3. Um, so again, you see that the light motif in this talk is trying to get from three to two. Now, um, um, a more substantial application relates to permutation groups and to fixed point free permutations. So let's, a derangement uh, is, is a fixed point free permutation by, by definition. And, and probably you all know that there is a very um, many, you know, many fixed points uh, um, theorems play fixed, or, Kind of fixed point free results about fixed point free um, uh, maps or existence of fixed points, and um, they kind of have lots of um, all in various branches in mathematics. But in permutation groups, uh, uh, there is also an ancient history. So, so Monmort proved um, 
like uh, more than 300 years ago that the proportions of derangements in S and the symmetric group uh, tends to one over E as N tends to infinity. And he was, he was actually, uh, people, people studied it for um, game, um, you know, it's not game theory in the sense of Johnny Uman or others, but it's kind of really games with a cube or, or something like this and trying to uh, estimate the probability of winning or strategies or stuff like this. So this is very old. Jordan proved much, much later, uh, um, uh, but still uh, lots of uh, years ago, that if G is a transitive permutation group on N elements and N, of course, it should be more than one, then there is a derangement in G. There, there must be a fixed point free permutation. And uh, of course, this is, this is very elementary to prove uh, in algebraic structures, in basic group theory, you learn it. Um, now, let me, let me jump to a much more modern result of Peter Cameron and Ari Cohen from 1990 that uh, um, um, Whenever you have um, a transitive permutation group, then the proportion of, uh, as above, uh, then the proportion of derangement in it is at least one over n, one of the degree of the group, and this is sharp. So that's a very um, nice result, I think. And um, 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 a bit after this result was, was published, and completely independently, Nigel Boston and, and I made the following uh, conjecture that it is more, much more ambitious than the Cameron Cohen. Uh, the conclusion is more ambitious. You kind of uh, um, replace the one over n to some universal positive constant epsilon. So, so the conjecture that the proportion of derangement in any finite simple transitive permutation group is, is bounded away from, uh, from zero. Um, okay, now let's um, let's um, um, introduce some some notations. So DG will be the set of derangements in in a permutation group D, G. Of course, uh, the inverse of it is it's a symmetric group, um, um, and uh, it's a normal subset. So you see that there, there are some connections to gradually emerging with what I said before. And uh, of course the conjecture is that uh, the cardinality of DG is at least epsilon G. And uh, for G transitive with, uh, with the point sub stabilizer and H, the, the, the union of the conjugates of the point stabilizer are exactly of course the permutation with fixed points of so the derangements is a complement. GG is G set minus uh, the union of H conjugate by G. As, so, um, um, Okay, so, so um, this conjecture was actually um, um, proved in a, in a set of many impressive paper by, by Fulman and Guralnik uh, starting from uh, 2002 and ended not long ago. And, and, uh, and they proved the conjecture in, in general. They even proved um, it for an explicit epsilon as you see, but for for G sufficiently large and the sufficiently large is not explicit. And, and this is a, an interesting point whether it can be made explicit. Now, um, um, as, a, as a corollary uh, of Gower streak, uh, which was also uh, some credit should, should be given to, um, to um, 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 Kiber and um, um, Nikolov, um, um, for, for this trick as well. So, so uh, since we've seen that finite simple group are quasi random, if we, um, if we take products of length um, three of derangement, then everything is okay. So, so um, you see a corollary of this, this is a very deep theorem, the theorem of Fulman and Guralnik, um, with Gower streak immediately tells us that for all sufficiently large transitive simple permutation group G, every permutation is a product of three derangements, but we don't know what sufficiently large mean. And, uh, but, and our main question is, can we replace three by two? So, um, so here is, a, so, so the answer is yes. So uh, if we have a finite simple transit permutation group, um, um, okay, by, uh, 
Okay, the, an the answer is, is, okay, I already gave a spoiler. So, um, um, because you see this theorem deals with, the, with um, um, some families of simple groups, not of all of them. So we'll, we'll gradually um, um, converge to, to, to yes in all cases. So, uh, so, so in this case, uh, um, um, what, what we know is that um, if it is alternating or fleet type of bounded rank and is sufficiently plug, any element is a product of two derangements because uh, uh, this is a, uh, we, we proved such a thing in the context of normal subsets in general, large normal subsets, and, uh, and therefore it, it, it immediately follows. Um, so, um, so it remains to deal with um, classical groups of unbounded rank. Um, we may assume a primitive action because if we enlarge the, if, if it's non-primitive that the point stabilizer is not maximal, we can enlarge it to a maximal subgroup and it works. Uh, um, of course, um, if, if there is derangement after this, um, you know, after enlarge is the, the maximal subgroup, we'll get less derangement. So, so if, uh, um, so things work in our favor. favor. Okay, now let me see. Um, um, okay, I'm, I'm quite close to the end and um, can, I, can I take maybe five minutes um, because of this colossal uh, technical um, problem in the beginning? <laughs> Yes, I think you can, yes, of course, because we, we lost between five and 10 minutes with this. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, um, okay, so, ah, so, 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 so in some cases, as, as we said, the, uh, the result about um, derangement follows from a more general result for normal subsets. And, uh, and now let me, so we, it remains to deal with classical group of large rank and uh, but let me mention some related uh, things. Um, so there is a context, there was a conjecture, or was because if it was solved, a conjecture of Cameron that almost all permutation in SN as N gets larger and larger, do not lie in a proper transitive subgroup, namely a proper subgroup not containing the alternating group. Okay, so the, the, the union of all proper transitive subgroups has a probability or is measure going to zero um, with N. And uh, in a very nice, not, not long, but, but a very impressive paper of Thomas Fuchek and Nazi Pieper, uh, they, they prove the conjecture. They also pose the similar problem for GLN uh, P, for where P is a fixed prime. Um, um, the result, there is an old result of mine, um, um, proving um, uh, or, or um, giving an affirmative answer um, um, to this problem, where here you know um, transitive is obviously um, replaced by by irreducible. So most matrices do not lie in a proper irreducible subgroup. Um, and then and then Fulman and Guralnik gave the the in my result actually Q Q is fixed. Uh, um, um, okay, and, and Fulman and Guralnik first, first of all they they make Q um, Q may change it doesn't have to be fixed, but they also dealt with many other types of classical group, uh, excluding a certain situation which is uh, which is um, described here. Um, now um, um, so. The next argument is that uh, you see if if the if the point stabilizer not not in the exceptional cases but if the point stabilizer the union of them is is negligible um, in size then when the, the the rank of the group is big enough then certainly the the um, the union is of size less than G over two, and therefore the complement of the union, which is this, the, the, the set of derangement has size more than G over two. So now we can, we can, um, we can happily use the, the most trivial argument I mentioned before, that if, if you have say a set T of size at least uh, G or more than G over two, then T square is everything. So you see even the most trivial argument is useful. And, and actually, we don't know how to do it without this trivial argument. Uh, 
Um, and, uh, and then the, the, um, the upshot is that except in, in this annoying case, uh, uh, everything, um, 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 derangement with, with two is mean that everything is a product of two derangements. Uh, also the identity element, obvious, obviously, because it's a symmetric set. Um, and then we have to deal with the, with the unpleasant remaining cases. And, and this is really a, a painstaking work with, with characters. Um, um, and, and some other tools, but main, mainly character theory. So, uh, and, and the upshot is that, um, that uh, the theorem holds in, in general. So, so if G is a finite simple transitive permutation group and is sufficiently large, then every element of G is a product of two derangements. Now, it is very natural to ask, are there any exceptions? We don't even know what sufficiently large means. Um, we, it is quite frustrating because, because if we knew, then maybe using computational group theory, we could, uh, we could check the remaining, the finitely many exceptions which should be checked by computer, but we don't know how, 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 how large is sufficiently large. So, uh, so anyway, we conjecture that there are no exceptions, that, that all finite simple groups have this property. And, uh, and Eamon O'Brien helped us a lot uh, with positive computational evidence. Um, so, so he checked lots of lots of cases which, uh, which, which really um, made our belief in the conjecture stronger. Um, and um, uh, as an appendix, this is uh, the, last, uh, <clears throat> the last page. I promised also something about growth for representations. Um, so let's say, let's say, um, let's say that G is again a finite simple group. Let's say it's of Lie type. K is a character of G of the complex numbers, and the, and let's define the uh, the size of of K, if you like, as the sum of the squares of the degree of all distinct irreducible, over all distinct irreducible constituents of X. So I, of, uh, sorry, chi. So I write chi as sigma n i chi i, where chi i are distinct irreducible constituents, n i are the multiplicities, but now I ignore the multiplicities when I define the size of chi. So this is, a, it's very similar to the, what's known as a Plancherel measure. It's kind of a, um, um, Normalize so so the maximal size of a character will be the size of G, of course. Okay, so uh, so what do we show um, again uh, with uh, with Michael Arsen and Fantier is that um, um, for every delta there is epsilon independent of G, depending only on delta, such that if k is an irreduc irreducible character of this group G, which is not too big. Um, well, it cannot be too big for the conclusion, for the desired conclusion to hold. So if we have this uh, uh, character, then the square of it is much bigger than the, the size of the car. The size of the square of chi is much bigger than the size of, of, of chi, like in the product theorem, but in two steps, not three steps. So size of chi to the one plus epsilon. Um, okay, this, this was an reducible character, uh, um, but um, it, it can also be shown that um, for, for general characters, not necessarily reducible, the same holds, but now actually, usually the good case was was bounded rank, but in this case, the good case um, is the, the unbounded rank. So if the rank is, is bigger than some function of, of, of this delta, um, um, then the same uh, conclusion holds. So we see that if, if we replace a uh, um, um, product of, uh, of subsets by, by, by product of, of characters, then um, there are two advantages um, that we, we do get two step goals instead of three step goals like in the product theorem. And we, we don't need the bounded rank uh, assumption. So, um, so let me uh, finish by thanking you all, the organizers and, uh, and everyone who is here and, uh, and mainly um, wishing a, a very happy birthday to Udi.
Okay, so thank you very much. So are there some